Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for... Uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan. So if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter, social media, follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you want to see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic. And today I'm here to talk about episode one of the new HBO series, The Idol, entitled Pop-Tarts and Rat Tales. That's an interesting title we have for this premiere episode. Uh, it directly refers to our lead characters, Jocelyn and Tedros. Uh, Jocelyn is the Pop-Tarts half of this uh, equation in this uh, episode title for a reason I'll get into a little bit later, but if you watch the episode, you already know what it is when I said Pop-Tart. You're like, oh shit, that's why. You know why. Uh, and then Rat Tail refers to Abel Tesfaye's character named Tedros, as Jocelyn remarks on him having a rat tail, uh, which is a, I don't want to say it's a type of hairstyle, it's like a hair attribute, <laughs> I, I don't know. But of note here is that the tail in the episode title is spelled tail, T-A-L-E, as in like a story as opposed to like a rat tail. And I think this episode title is telling us something early on about Tedros. And the episode itself tells us this as well. Throughout the episode, we see him kind of like, I think the best example is toward the end of the episode, we see him practicing how he's going to greet someone. Uh, but I think it's telling us that he's essentially a rat who's likely, he's likely going to do a lot of lying and manipulating to get what he wants, telling a lot of tales, aka lies. So I like, it's, it's like a, uh, it refers to the title characters, but it's also kind of like a a, a play on um, the word tale as well. But, you know, now that we're done talking about the episode title, uh, let's briefly talk about uh, who's involved here. And then I'll give kind of like my spoiler free thoughts on the episode as well as kind of like my intentions going forward with coverage. So uh, I was immediately on board with watching this show because it's created by Sam Levinson, uh, who also does Euphoria. And if you're a fan of this channel, you immediately was like, say less, Mike, I already know. Because <laughs> you already know how much I fuck with Euphoria, right? But I also like the fact that this is a six episode series because that feels to me like I have a really compelling story that I want to tell and I only need six episodes to do it. I don't need seven. I don't need eight. I don't need 10. I don't need a second season. I want to tell this story. I got six episodes of story that I want to tell and and, and this is what I want to tell. And I, I like that too because Sam Levinson has already shown himself to, to be somebody who says, I have this story and I, I, I only need to tell that. And I think the best example were the, the Rue and Jules uh, solo episodes that, that aired in between seasons one and two of Euphoria. That just felt like, hey, I want to tell this story about Rue. Boom, you got one episode and we're good, right? So uh, hearing six episodes like that feels very intentional. And that gives me confidence because that makes me think that the creator knows what they want and that they have a pretty strong plan. Uh, I was also intrigued by the show's leads. Uh, I haven't seen Lily Rose Depp in anything else, and she obviously has a a very, I don't even want to say recognizable or famous father. Her father's a fucking legend in the game. So, um, and then I was also curious to see uh, Abel Tesfaye, better known as The Weeknd, and see if he had any acting chops, see what he had up to. And then also, uh, I heard that this show was by and large his brainchild. You know, this was, this was an idea that he presented to Sam Levinson. And anytime you have it, someone who has a, an already established uh, reputation as being a creative, 
you're, you're automatically going to kind of be intrigued to see what, what they have in a field other than the one that they're known for. Like, can he bring uh, the creativity that he might bring to his music? Can he bring that to television? So, like, there was a whole lot going on here that had me not just interested, but kind of excited. Like, okay, I want to see what happens here. After watching the first episode, I'm kind of in this weird space because I feel like I know so little of what this series intends on doing despite it only be, being six episodes. So I've already seen nearly 20% of the whole fucking thing. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, I, I, I don't really know where this is going. And it did so little in this first episode that I feel like I can't give a proper assessment because I don't know enough about it. But what I do know after watching this one episode is that I'm deeply concerned on if this show is going to have something important to say like Euphoria does about addiction. Or if it's just going to be a generic story about a young pop star who allows herself to be manipulated and controlled by Tedros, but with vibrant colors, titties, dicks, and cum shots. Like that, like that, like I don't, I don't know what thing I'm going to get yet. And after that first episode, it's really feeling like it's going to be the latter thing. And I don't have any fucking interest at all in watching that show. Like this needs to take that idea the idea of, of, of this young pop star who has, on one hand, people who are giving her advice that is good for her career, or at least at, at, or at, most people would consider to be good for her career. And then on the other hand, you have fucking uh, this scumbag rat with a rat tail telling rat tails, giving her all kinds of bad advice into her other ear. Like, take that idea, but then put a new and creative twist on it. And after this one episode, I don't know if it intends on telling me a fresh story or just the same old shit, just highly stylized with a lot of fucking in it. And one thing this show is doing that I didn't expect and that I did kind of enjoy, though, is I think Jocelyn, Jocelyn's actual team, the people that are around her that, like, I guess, are for the label or whatever, uh, I think they're actually pretty funny. Like, I didn't expect to get any comedy out of this show at all. But if I'm going to regularly see Dan Levy, Jane Addams, Eli Roth, and Hank Azaria just chilling and talking shit... Like, that alone might be enough to make me keep watching the show. Because, like, I mean, I'm in on, like, that, their conversations, I'm in on that. Like, get me more of that. But, and, and which is surprising because I didn't think, I, if, if somebody had told me you would get a surprising amount of comedy out of this show, I'd be like, uh, I don't know if I really want to watch that. But I think it worked here, especially because I think, uh, in, com in contrast, there's a lot of other shit, the more serious shit that doesn't work. Or at least at the very, at the very least, we don't even know if it's going to be something worth watching or not yet. Uh, then we have Rachel Sanat. I don't know if I'm saying her name correctly. She looks really familiar, but apparently I've never seen her in anything before based on her IMDb. But uh, she plays Jocelyn's assistant and best friend on this show. And I think she's really good too, in, in a comedic way. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff that's working uh, on this show as far as humor goes. Uh, but like I said a moment ago, the dramatic stuff here, it, it, it feels really bland, generic, and it feels like they're trying to mask that blandness with vibrant colors and nut on the face of Johnny Depp's daughter. And I'm just like, not, I, I'm not into that. And when I called her Johnny Depp's daughter just now, I wasn't trying to, to minimalize her as her own person. I'm trying to make the point of what I think the show is using to gain our attention. Like, hey, we got Johnny Depp's daughter here. And guess what? There's cum on her face. Like, that's like, if that's how you're trying to pull me into the show... I'm not, I'm not here for that. I'm here to watch a show. I can see nut on women's faces all over the internet. I don't even need to go to, to HBO and, uh, uh, you know, their Sunday night, 9 PM show to get that. Like, I don't, I don't need that. So, you know, I, I, I'm deeply concerned about this show leaning way too much into the stylization to mask a weak story, weak script, weak acting, any of those things. And that, that's my biggest concern. But um, also, and it, admittedly, this is a personal issue for me. This is probably something that's not going to bother anyone but me. <laughs> but uh, Jocelyn's character, I think, appears to be modeled after the young pop stars from like the late, late 90s, early aughts, you know, when uh, Eminem was coming into uh, fame. And then on TRL, you had uh, NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. You had Britney. You had Christina Aguilera. They mentioned Britney directly. Uh, in this show. And I think that they're going for what they want us to take away from it is kind of like, hey, these are the edgy, 
uh, you know, girl next door, but here she is in a short skirt, or here she is with a wet t-shirt on, and you can see her nipples, but she's the girl next door. Like, that thing that they were going for with Brittany and Christina in the early aughts, I think that's what they want us to connect the Jocelyn character with now. But in both appearance and behavior, and appearance is an important key here, in appearance and behavior, she's giving me way more Miley Cyrus vibes than Britney Spears or Christina Aguilera. And here, and of course, that's not a problem necessarily unless you're me and you, <laughs> God, this be so me. But I personally find Miley Cyrus to be like pretty gross and vomit inducing. Like I feel like she thinks that she's like Christina Aguilera at that time. But like for me, she looks like she smells like swamp sweat and cigarettes. And like, she just, I don't know. I feel like she's sticky and gross. Like, I I, I don't know. Like she just comes off like, uh, like I, I, this is just, that's just how I look anytime I see Miley Cyrus. Like even like she could like, I'm not even going to go there. I'm not, I'm not going to make this into like shit on Miley Cyrus. But like point being, I don't find Miley Cyrus to be what Miley Cyrus believes herself to be, which is there's who the fuck am I? Who gives a fuck what I think about her versus what she thinks about her? But my point is with this character of Jocelyn, she seems way more similar to Miley Cyrus than Britney Spears. And Miley Cyrus is to me kind of what I want this show to avoid being like she, she, she can fucking sing. But like up until very recently, it seemed like she just wanted to be, to be known for being like half naked and raunchy. Like, hey, I'm Billy Ray Cyrus's daughter and now I'm out here being trashy. And look, and now here we are like, hey, I'm Johnny Depp's daughter and here's my character being trashy. Like I said, so there's too much to tie in with Miley Cyrus. And like, I don't want that kind of vibe of like, hey, uh, here I am being trashy when I can do other things. Like, I don't want to watch this show and think here it is being trashy when it could be euphoria. And she's giving me Miley Cyrus vibes. I don't like Miley Cyrus. So I'm not finding her character to be particularly compelling yet. Um, and then uh, fucking uh, Abel testify his character. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him the respect. My, my wife told me that he doesn't go by The weekend anymore. I didn't know that because I don't give a fuck about celebrity news or The weekend or what his name is or what he wants to be called. But, well, no, I give a fuck what he wants to be called because I'm gonna, if, if it's true that he doesn't want to go by The weekend anymore and he wants to go by, by his, his, his birth name, I'm going to call him by his birth name. But... Outside of that, I don't give a fuck what, <laughs> I give a fuck what his name is. But um, he's... I don't want to... I'm not going... I don't even want to say I don't want to say bad because that kind of sounds like I do want to say bad, but I'm trying to avoid it. I don't want to say bad because I don't want to say bad. I don't think he's bad. Uh, just right now, he hasn't gotten a ton of screen time, and I just don't really know... Um, I haven't been particularly impressed by anything that I've seen, but I haven't been appalled either. And I think that there's going to be, just like I'm trying to give a, a a level assessment of what I feel like I saw, like, okay, yeah, I don't like Miley Cyrus, or yeah, I think this is raunchy. I'm trying to like, oh, and I'm going to get into some stuff that I like, some more stuff I liked in a minute. I'm trying to be balanced. I feel like he's probably going to get attacked. The show is probably going to get attacked. And I don't want to pile on with any of that needlessly, but... In this first episode, I didn't see a lot out of him. And one of the big things that was important to me coming in was like, not just is he going to bring the creativity that I know the individual as a man has to this television television show, but also just like, what is he going to do? Like, is he going to be a good actor? Like, am I going to be impressed? Am I going to be appalled? Like, I don't know. Uh, so far, I'm kind of just like, okay, well, uh, nothing special here. But um, so talked about the two leads. A couple more things and I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, Speaking of Miley Cyrus smelling like cigarettes, this character, Jocelyn, Jocelyn, again, she smokes a lot. And like, if you've ever watched Mad Men, you remember how much the characters on Mad Men smoked back when smoking was popping and you could do it indoors? Jocelyn would be appalled. No, no, the characters on Mad Men would be appalled by how much Jocelyn smokes. Like, Jocelyn is never not smoking. And again, like, I don't know if Miley Cyrus smokes, but when I... <laughs> But when I feel like Miley Cyrus probably smells like cigarettes and sweat, and I see <laughs> Lily Rose Depp with the blonde haircut, sweaty and smoking, I can't help but think <laughs> she's supposed to be like Miley Cyrus. And I, I don't know. I, I don't. Maybe she is. Maybe they are going for Miley Cyrus, and they don't want to say that because she's gonna sue or something. I, I don't know. But uh, I'm not saying that's good or bad about the smoking thing. Just something that I noticed, and I feel like if I notice it, it needs to matter 
don't just have her smoke like, oh, she just smokes, just smoke. Like, oh, that's just her character. Like, I, I, I feel like I wanted to be something like she didn't start smoking until her mom died and she picked it up. Like, whatever. Like, I, I, I want to feel like it, it, they put it in there with purpose and not just like, yeah, let's just have, just have her fucking smoke. Just because people do that. Just fucking smoke. Just have her fucking smoke. Like, I, I don't know. I don't want to feel that. Uh, this episode does deal in uh, more than drugs and sex, though. Even though I'm stating my concern that that's all it's going to be. Uh, it's not all that, at least right now. Uh, it's just not enough other stuff. But uh, Jocelyn has some interesting shit going on that I'm interested in the show exploring. Uh, for example, apparently she had a, like I uh, mentioned a moment ago, had a mental breakdown recently after the passing of her mother. And the song that she's performing throughout this episode, kind of like her comeback song. And it's raunchy. Uh, it's a literally dumb song with shitty lyrics, which she herself points out. And she does not like the song. And she wants to make meaningful music, I think. And uh, But this is what she needs to be doing to kind of like fuel a comeback. But then you have cold-ass, manipulative-ass Tedros come along, and he encourages her to make the music she wants to make, but will undoubtedly be terrible for her in many other ways. And if that's going to be the focus of the show, I hate how high my voice went right there. If that's going to be the focus of the show, and the creators involved have something interesting to say, about Jocelyn's internal conflict and the influence that Tedros has. And then this speaks to something larger about the music industry, which, of course, Abel can speak to directly himself. Like, the, this could be, like, first-person uh, information. Like, yeah, this is what they do in the music industry. Like, it doesn't have to be word of mouth. You can get it directly from someone himself. And then you want to add on some stylized colors and camera shots and a whole lot of fucking on top of that. Then you got a show that intrigues me. So... That's kind of, that's where I'm sitting. I, I just don't know if this is that show yet. It might be. It might be. But it might not be. And, and my gut feeling after this first episode is that it's not. I hope it proves me wrong. So I'll definitely be watching next week with this only being six episodes. Uh, next week's episode better sell me or I'll likely be out on this show altogether. Because I'm like, well, if you got one, you, if I watch the third of the shit and you don't have anything, <laughs> you have anything fucking interesting to say, why am I going to watch the other two thirds? But I'd say a spoiler version video for episode two, because of course there's all kinds of shit that happened in this episode that I probably would have liked to talk about, but I want to give everybody a chance to watch it. But a spoiler video of episode two is likely, but I won't make any promises beyond that. Like, I, I like if episode two is bad enough, if episode two is bad, I'll just be like, yo, fuck this. And I'll put a comment or <laughs> like somewhere and be like, yeah, I'm not covering that shit no more. Uh, but my intention was to give this full coverage, but if the remaining five episodes give me as little to talk about as this one, uh, that definitely won't be happening. But also, as usual, if this video gets a fuck ton of plays, I'm going to cover it. So, or, 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 or people ask, no, not or. If it doesn't get any plays and people ask me to cover it, sorry. <laughs> but it has to at least perform well and then have people ask me to cover it, and I still will, even if it sucks. So we'll kind of see. Uh, we'll make that decision after episode two. Uh, and until then, peace.